Ireland with a score of 271. The winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Rory McIlroy. I think I'm, I'm proudest of the way I handled my emotions. I'm proudest of how I gathered myself when I needed to. Proud of how I kept it together, even when it got a little tight. And it was disciplined, it was hard fought. You know, I didn't run away with it. You know, there's a lot of stuff that I could be proud of. And when I look back on this win, that's what I'll, that's what I'll think most about. On the northwest coast of England, Royal Liverpool Golf Club in Hoylake hosted the 143rd Open Championship. With the renowned sporting hotbeds of both Liverpool and Manchester on its doorstep, the enthusiasm of the galleries was no surprise. The historic links were alive. Every venue has its own signature, and uh, we do get a younger crowd here, a more boisterous crowd. And I think they are sports or event fans, a lot of these people, just as much as they are golf fans. And so you do get a bit more of a boisterous buzz, shall I say, than, uh, than some other venues do. Tiger Woods had fought a fitness battle just to compete. Absent from the year's first two majors, there was great anticipation surrounding his return. The sport's biggest name was on the comeback trail. The way he dominated golf for all those years, it's quite remarkable. It is not an easy game to dominate. Uh, but his back injury has really, really you know, set him back a bit. But he's fighting, he's fighting it, and I'm sure we'll see more of him. But he still has the, the Tiger aura. He still has it. Um, and I very much hope he gets back to his winning ways. At Hoylake in 2006, Woods won the Open for the third time. But with form and confidence drained, his return started miserably. Tiger sometimes now, I think now more than ever, uh, almost holds you hostage. I mean, you can't take your eyes off him. We, we used to feel that way back in, in 2000 and even 97, you know, after it won the Masters by 12, that you just, you never knew what you were going to see from this guy and you didn't want to miss it. Uh, now you don't know what you're going to see and, and you don't want to miss it either. Tiger at the first, fourth shot. Putting it back up the slope through the gully. Oh, 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 what are you doing, Tiger? Perhaps he feels in such good condition he's going to give the field two up start. He's still Tiger. Um, and he's got a presence about him that's unlike any other in golf. But if you look at the golf itself, there's nothing special about it right now. Dropped a shot at the first. Dropped a shot at the second. Not good news. What did it for me was the, was the 11th. When that putt rolled in, you saw just the lightest fist pump. Struck it very well. Tiger, Tiger. And from that point forward, that swing was the freest swing I'd seen all day. Woods birdie turned on the light. Proof that a 14-time major champion should never be ignored. And it's another superb arm shot. He's warming to his task. With five birdies on the back nine, it was vintage Tiger. He shot 69, and the spring was back in his step. On a day of massive crowds, his gallery had been immense. So too were the numbers following Sergio Garcia. The Open just... The feelings you get are just uh, spectacular. It's uh, the combination of the golf courses, the history, and, and the crowds. They've treated me like, um, pretty much like if I was a Brit. It just feels amazing, and that's uh, one of the reasons why it's, it's my favorite championship. Garcia's fans soon had cause to cheer.
In stark contrast to Woods, his start couldn't have been better. Garcia for a birdie to go to two under. Oh, come on, it's there, well done. We've definitely seen uh, a different Sergio Garcia this year. He's a more relaxed person. He's, he's happy off the course, and I think we're seeing that um, with his play on the course and, and how great it is to see, because over the last 20 years, he's without question been one of the, the, the best ball strikers in the game. Serene and confident, Garcia was four under in the mix at yet another major championship. A golden morning for Italy was sparked by Matteo Manassero on the first. I was actually about to hit my tee shot on the second hole. So I had to back off because the, the roar was, was pretty intense. Manassero went on to a 67. And the Molinari brothers, Eduardo and Francesco, needed only one shot more. We have one Molinari in the clubhouse with a round of 68. Yeah. Oh, the brothers are now tied. <laughs> Seeing uh, the only three Italians in the field going on to the leaderboard in the first round of the Open Championship, it must have been an amazing feeling for anyone really in Italy involved in, in golf. But they, and everyone else, were surpassed by a 25-year-old from Northern Ireland carrying a huge burden of expectation. I think when you're going out to play the first round of a major, especially the first round of an Open Championship, there's always anxiety there, you're nervous. I felt like the start of the course at Hoylake was the, the toughest stretch of holes, like the first three holes, if you could sort of navigate your way through those, then you, know, you had some chances coming up. I think a very important shot for me was the second shot into the, the second hole. Coming in from the clouds. Oh, that's an absolute crackerjack. It's got to, isn't it? Oh! It was just a perfect number, 191, six iron. Um, and obviously it, it went very close and, you know, it was an easy first birdie of the championship. This for birdie. Well done. I felt confident with my game, but I didn't... I didn't really have that inner peace until maybe midway through the first round, whenever I felt like my game was, was really there and I was on song and I, you know, I got, got a few under par. I think that's when this inner peace, as I called it, uh, started to kick in. On the last, McElroy putted for a birdie and a two-shot lead. This for 65. Not to be. But a 66 will do very nicely. As he left the arena, out in the D estuary, the tide began to turn and the wind began to strengthen, placing those still on the course at an obvious disadvantage. The way the course conditions were and the setup of the week, it was certainly in Rory's favour if he was on, and clearly going out first round shooting six under par, he's on. So. There are a few guys out here that when they're on, you don't want to be coming from too far behind, and he's one of them. But the world number one showed great tenacity. Defying the conditions, Scott birded the fourth. Heading out in the first round of uh, any tournament, but especially the Open, there's the nerves and anticipation. Rolling a long putt in certainly settles you down, and and get you feeling good about things going forward. Even better came on the fifth. Scott made an eagle and eventually signed for a 68. The day wasn't so kind to Phil Mickelson, defending champion and golfing enigma. You know, you could put him just off the edge of the green and, and he'll mess something up. You could put him in the worst spot possible and he, he just delivers magic for you. His best trick of round one was performed on the 18th. Already out of bounds and playing his fifth shot, Mickelson conjured up brilliance. <laughs> you got to laugh, that was amazing. You 
never ceases to amaze. There's a, there's a saying in America built off a, a commercial, uh, what will Phil do next? And it's a question that's been asked for 20 years and, and there will never be an answer until the day he retires. His closing act was outrageous. On this day, Mickelson limited the damage to a 74. Well, that's Phil, isn't it? What a, what a fantastic short game he has, like no other, really. I think being Open champion has been an enormous thrill for him. I, I'm not sure he ever thought he would be. And he's been a, a great gentleman, great ambassador for us. It's done, uh, done no harm to our role of honour, if you like, to have him on it. Keeping the claret jug was now unlikely. Trailing more than half the field, Mickelson was already eight adrift on McElroy, the first round leader. Weather and the luck of the draw impacts the open more than any other major. The time you play is often crucial, a fact not lost on Adam Scott. For a second day, the pre-championship favorite was faced with the wind at its most severe. Friday morning was very difficult conditions. I was really fighting to stay in contention and I felt like I needed a really good finish and I hit two great shots into 17 and hold the putt. He finished three under with birdies on the last two holes. But it was clear he had fallen victim to the elements. I was fighting for my chances in the open, really. I think the frustration came over me Friday afternoon when I sat at home and watched the wind drop down to almost nothing. Uh, that, was, that was tough to see because the leader obviously was running away from me. But McElroy had issues of his own. The leader arrived, intent on avoiding another of the damaging second round meltdowns that had blighted his season. It was a trend he wasn't allowed to forget. The world's media sort of that. Rory, when was it exactly that you realised Freaky Fridays had become a problem? There were so many questions asked about it and, you know, I would have preferred for it not even to have been mentioned. I had a bad Friday afternoon at Augusta. You know, I had to, I had to answer all those questions and I had to talk about it. And then I started off horrifically at Quail Hollow on Friday afternoon. I try to be as honest as I can with my, you know, with my answers in the press. And then did the same thing at Sawgrass the week later. So that was like three tournaments in a row. That's when I was, a, was conscious of it. And then it was a tough press conference, but you know that you're playing well. And if you just try and do the same things as, as you did on Thursday, then hopefully, you know, another freaky Friday wouldn't happen. But McElroy was tentative. He wavered at the first and made a bogey. Been answering questions about Fridays. Just get them out of the forefront of your mind. I'm sure a lot of other people were thinking, oh, here we go again. I knew there was chances coming up to make birdies, and I knew that I was playing well, so I, I didn't panic after that, but it, it definitely wasn't the best way to start the day. Such concerns soon evaporated. Rory looks unstoppable at times, and, and this was one of those days. But the shot he played into six, uh, the distance that it had, this guy looked like he was going for the jugular. And holding that putt um, was almost like the gun going off at the uh, bit of sprint. Yeah, here we go. I tell you what, he gets that putter rolling. The way he hits the ball, watch out everyone else. Those birdies on five and six really settled me into the round and, and got me going. Targeting another birdie, McElroy was joined on the eighth green by a local. Oh, lovely. Given the pressure, the intruder brought light relief. A pheasant. I didn't notice it until he'd sort of made his way across. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. <laughs> Don't believe it, do you? <laughs> he went right across the green. Roy just had a putt and he had to back off and let the pheasant go through in golfing terms. And uh, I made the putt. I mean, it, it didn't seem to phase him. I felt it was great that, you know, whatever distractions there were, I was able to just regroup and, you know, I, I could focus again and go straight back into my process of, you know, trying to hit a good putt and, and, I, and I rolled a great putt right in the middle of the hole. And that kept, you know, momentum going for the round. Oh. 
Beautiful. Two birdies in one hole. McElroy. Wonderful. And the pheasant stands by the side and applauds with the rest of them. McElroy leads by two in the Open Championship. But it wasn't such a good day for the Italians, apart from Francesco Molinari, who replaced his brother Eduardo on the leaderboard. You know, I was hitting the ball well, rolling the ball well on the greens, and uh, everything was going uh, the right way. Molinari dug deep to save power on the last and remained six under. Doesn't that make you go home feeling better? But once again, Tiger endured a nightmare start. make five on this hole. His round began with a six, and worse was to come. On the 17th, Woods drove out of bounds and made a triple bogey. Suddenly, the three-time Open winner was in danger of missing the cut. He had to birdie the last. This is a must. Hoy Lake's last Open champion continued to fight. Back in 2006, Tiger had been chased by Sergio Garcia, who delivered a moment to savor on the second. Oh, he's oh. hold it! He's hold it! The hole out from 2006 kind of kept coming up in my in my head uh, throughout the week at, at that hole. Eight years later, and on the very same hole, lightning struck twice. One of the best wind players out here, Garcia. I just hit a beautiful little draw six iron uh, into the wind. When it bounced and started rolling, it just looked like it, it wasn't going to go anywhere else. I looked to my left and uh, my, my family and my girlfriend, they were, they were there screaming and shouting and uh, you know, I kind of looked at them and said, I mean, this is, this is amazing. It was one of those funny things and uh, you know, something that, uh, that I will always remember. Garcia played his first two rounds with a familiar partner, American Ricky Fowler. Sergio and I have played a lot together the past year and a half or so. We've got a lot of pairings together, and it's, it's been a lot of fun because we've played well together. We've been able to feed off each other, and uh, we enjoy each other's company on the golf course. And it showed. From the moment they teed off, both reveled in the calmest conditions of the day. Friday afternoon, the wind had died down a little bit. It was it was cool and windy in the morning. Um, so I definitely got on the easier side of the draw. The 25-year-old put together a powerful finish. Yes, Ricky Fowler moves up into that group on six under par, tied for second place. After birdieing the 16th and 17th, imagination came to his rescue on the last. Beautiful shot from there. And when Garcia also closed the day six under, they were again paired together for round three. You know, it would be six under um, after the first two rounds. You know, other than other than where Rory was at, um, I was very much in the mix. Dustin Johnson shot a 65, the lowest score of the championship. With that, he moved into second place. But this was McElroy's day. Oh, what a round. Lovely stuff. By matching his opening 66, he laid those Friday demons to rest. I, I felt like I put everything to bed on that Friday. I played some really good golf. I you know, made some nice, nice putts coming in. And well, when I got back into the press conference, I was just sort of sitting back and thinking, you know, it'll be nice not to have to answer these questions again for a while. On 12 under, it was also nice to lead by four, but he knew the job was only half done.
Day three brought an enforced break with tradition. A Met Office weather warning led to the first two-tee start in the history of the championship. We were told that it was going to be, we were going to be deluged. So although it uh, flew in the face of history, it was clearly the, the most likely way that we were going to get play finished. The decision helped the leaders by shielding them from the worst of the approaching weather. On the first, though, McElroy faltered. It's all in the mind. With a four-shot lead going into the weekend at the Open, you're far enough ahead that if you can keep your mind in the right place, it's going to be very hard for anyone to catch you. But it didn't stop them trying. From the outset, one of his playing partners, Dustin Johnson, set about applying the pressure. It's only the 37th hole in the tournament. You know, there's still halfway to go. There's so much golf left. If you're worrying about your lead being cut in half halfway through the tournament, then that's not where you should be mentally. I knew that if I could play the golf that I was capable of, I should be leading going into the last day. Even so, when McElroy bogeyed and the American birdied, the lead was cut to two. Playing alongside them in the final group was Francesco Molinari, who had a disastrous start. So I missed the first green to the left. And once again, he's going to have a tough time getting that one up and down. I struggled in the, in the first few holes. I don't know for what exact reason, but I didn't really feel comfortable uh, from the start of the round. His day began with three consecutive bogeys. Yet to hit a green in regulation. Molinari's only consolation was that his older brother, Eduardo, was rounding 68 to finish seven under par. It was a, a tough day for me, definitely, but even if I wasn't playing very well, Eduardo was stepping up and was uh, charging up the leaderboard. So an Italian flag was always in the in the first page of the of the leaderboard. McElroy's chief threat emerged from the match ahead. Yeah, pretty good start for Thorne. But the Californian wasn't working solo. Each inspiring the other, both Fowler and Garcia were outstanding. Beautiful, creeping inexorably up to Rory's heels. Ricky, oh, 10 under par for Ricky. What a start for him. First two rounds, we were able to kind of just cruise around, play some good golf. Um, and Saturday, we were able to kind of push each other a little bit to, uh, you know, get up there and, and uh, you know, make it a bit more of a tournament again. With a wealth of quality, they mastered the front nine. That'll do. Two cracking shots in a row. They don't come much better than that. In comparison, McElroy was toiling. Oh, Rory, Rory, Rory. And while others were moving forward, he was standing still. What I remember about Saturday is, is a series of runs at, at Rory by a cast of contenders. First it was Dustin, he doesn't keep up, and here comes Sergio and he falls back. And you look up and here comes Ricky. Sensing an opportunity to strike, Fowler hunted more birdies. Well, 10 is a very reachable par five. It's one that you're, you're dis definitely disappointed if you don't birdie. 11, I rolled in a long putt. Has he hit it? Has he hit it? He has. He moves within one. Twelve was definitely a hole that you don't don't look at making three very very often. Really magical stuff he's producing here. I just made some really good swings and was able to hit it in there close and uh, definitely stole one there. 
There's scoreboards on the, you know, on the side of the green. They're pretty hard to miss and, and pretty hard to avoid. <laughs> and that's when I knew that he was getting on a, a good run. On the 12th, McElroy needed to save par to stay in front. When you look back two years from now, I, I have a hunch you might completely forget that one hour where this thing was wide open. One little wiggle from Rory, and all of a sudden, we're all tied. It had taken two and a half days, but finally, McElroy had been caught. As he trod water, Garcia and Fowler had the momentum. The strain was taking its toll as McElroy stepped onto the 13th tee. Trying to draw it in, but not quite coming, and that had a nasty hop vindictively to the right. Suddenly, the championship was in the balance. You know, he's, he's very calm under pressure. You know, in relative terms to what I've seen, you know, other players or guys I've carried for. From a difficult position, now was the time for McElroy to regain the Midas touch. For me, 13 was a, a big point in that round because it was, a, it was a big up and down. It was a big putt to save par. If I felt quite nervous about a putt, just to, to try and take the end result out of my mind, uh, I focused on a spot uh, two or three inches in front of the ball. And I said, right, all you need to do is roll it over this spot. That's all I kept telling myself was, you know, roll it over your spot, just roll it over your spot. That kept any sort of momentum I had um, to go forward and, and play the, the last few holes like I did. But up ahead and tied for the lead, it was Fowler who was now in danger of dropping a shot. Rory always knows what's going on in the golf course. I mean, I mean, he'd actually be able to tell me nearly what happened in the group up in front more than I could. He's very well aware of the position he's in. Having watched his lead slowly disappear, McElroy at last sensed a chance to pull away. Usually you'd expect somebody to collapse, or maybe a combination. And in here you just had Mr. Rocket Ship just launch. Suddenly, he was too clear again. What Rory did, really with the putt on 14 going forward, it was so sensational that you almost forgot this guy was tied for the lead with, with you know, six holes to play on Saturday. Under darkening skies, Dustin Johnson's fortunes also revived with birdies on the 13th and 15th. <laughs> McElroy's lead increased to three when Fowler made another bogey. But the leader wasn't satisfied. On the 16th, with the storm yet to break, Rory electrified Hoylake. That's a beautiful drive. Pin was sort of back, middle, back, left, and it was just a perfect four iron. He's looking good, I think. He likes it. He likes it. Does he like it? He loves it. I had a, I had a perfect shot. I, it was a great strike. I probably couldn't have left myself a, a better putt on the green for Eagle. I sort of had a good feeling about it. I don't know, you know, you, you have these moments on, on greens where you, know, you, just, you just know. All I had to do was roll it over my spot, and, and that's what I did. McElroy strode on, and as he forged clear, his challengers began to buckle. On the 17th, Garcia couldn't escape a bogey.
having dropped three shots in four holes. Fowler recovered to birdie the 18th and secure his place in the final group next day. Magnificent shot from Fowler. But momentum was now firmly with McElroy, who saved his best for last. Sometimes it's hard with a big grandstand behind the green to, to, to pick a specific target that you, know, you want to start the ball at. I actually started it on the Northern Irish flag. That swing on, on 18 is vintage Rory. It's a moment you'll, you'll never forget. I mean, the good players always hit the great shots when they need to. You knew that was the shot of a champion. The better he plays, the more he bounces. This kid doesn't walk down the fairway, he just he bounces, doesn't he? And that's, that's when you know he's got his game. He looked like a boxer who had just knocked out his opponent. He's, he stood there and looked up at that, that gallery knowingly, and you just looked and said, all right, he just won this thing on Saturday. Just 90 minutes earlier, McElroy had been tied for the lead. Now he led by six shots after one of the greatest bursts of brilliance in Open Championship history. Throughout the history of the championship, there have been symbolic moments. As Fowler and McElroy arrived, the giant they were upstaging trudged up the 72nd hole. Tiger left as they set about changing the guard. Two rivals, but also friends, stepping into the cauldron together. Final pairings at a major can be, you know, nerve-wracking. But I think it, it worked to, to both of our advantage being paired together. You know, we both felt comfortable out there. Being able to go walk around with a friend and, you know, chat it up down the fairways, have a good time, and make it feel a little bit more like you're, you're at home playing. There just happens to be a few thousand people out there on the ropes watching you. You know, being paired together, it not only helped him, but it helped me. Fowler was intent on opening with a birdie. So too was McElroy. If he starts with the birdie, I'm not sure if we're ready for the volume. Well, we'll hear it now. <laughs> it was the perfect opening. McElroy improved to 17 under and immediately placed his playing partner under more pressure. Fowler missed and trailed by seven. Garcia would soon replace Fowler as McElroy's biggest rival. Two early birdies carried Sergio to 12 under. Then on the fifth, his short game created another. I hit a really nice chip, uh, very, very close to, to birdie, for birdie. And, and then it, it looked like I could, uh, I could have a little chance uh, of, of making a challenge. But while Garcia took advantage of that par five, Dustin Johnson bogeyed. After three days of fighting, he was detached from the leaders and fading. That's a six for Dustin Johnson. That's a big setback on a birdie hole. And on the same hole, the leader also had problems. Comes here a little heavy and, ooh, plummets into the grandstand area. Five was an accident. These things happen. To lose your ball right out of the rough, grabs your, grabs your club, I, I get that. And the, the place he has to drop um, is, is just the hairiest little drop zone you'll ever see. It was a surprising mistake and his first sign of weakness. 
Making bogey there wasn't ideal, obviously, but I told myself walking off the fifth green, this is the same position you've been in the last three days. You're even par after five. That's exactly where you were on Friday. It's exactly where you were yesterday. Nothing's different. But this was different. On the sixth, the pressure mounted. It was probably the first part of the week that I got a little anxious on. I, I read the putt from behind the hole and it looked very straight to me. Then I went around to the other side of the hole and had another look and I, I got a different read and it just sort of put me in two minds. You know, I was trying to roll it over my spot but I just wasn't sure the spot that I was rolling it over was the right one. And just that look on his face where you just don't feel it's, it's going in. And then I thought, right, like, let's just steady the ship here. McElroy was entitled to be worried. Fowler had been nothing but steady. With the attention focused on others, he quietly steered clear of errors. And the seventh, Hoylake's toughest hole, posed another formidable challenge. Crucial tee shot for McElroy. The atmosphere is electric now, crackling away, because that lead has been halved. Had a bit of an awkward lie, an uphill lie in the rough, and uh, I felt the wind was going to catch it early and it would bring it back. And I hit this thing and it came out with a, quite a lot of draw spin and it sort of held up against the wind and finished in the front left bunker. I think seven might have been the most important hole in the tournament for Rory. You can't drop three in a row there, and that was Sergio starting to, to stir. That walk between the second shot on seven and getting to the green was, I just kept telling myself, Rory, try and get this up and down. That bunker shot on seven, uh, even though it was just a par, that was a, that was a pretty big par. Beautifully played by McElroy. May just steady things, stop the bleeding. With the spotlight elsewhere, Jim Furyk birdied the first two holes of the back nine. He now shared fourth. Fowler remained within striking distance, and Garcia was up to second. But McElroy still led by three. And after a stress-free par on the eighth, he tightened his grip. Oh, oh, yes, he needed that. Just at the right time for McElroy. The birdie on nine was huge. That relaxed me going into the back nine, and I knew I had some chances coming up. The par five tenth would prove vital. I knew the tenth hole uh, was an important hole because um, you would expect Rory to, to bury the hole. It was nice to be able to, to get a good shot there and, and give myself an eagle chance. This is the best player to have not won a major to date. He was just on the attack and he played with freedom. Um, he played aggressively, he was a real matador out there. The lead was cut to two. It was nice to be able to make that, to get as close as possible, and then see how, uh, how he would uh, you know, react to that. McElroy reacted by birding the same hole to restore his three-shot cushion, while Australian Mark Leishman shot a 65 to lead in the clubhouse at 12 under. Approaching the end of his round, Furyk birded the 15th and 16th and was heading for his best finish in the Open. At that point on the back nine, I was trying to play a good solid round of golf. I played good, smart shots. I put the ball in positions that I could score from. I made my pars on the way through three difficult holes. Jim just, he just competes. What he's got, um, there's just a great, great fight to this guy. And Furyk also birded the 18th. At the age of 44, 
He had taken the clubhouse lead. To go and birdie three of the last four on Sunday was, was definitely a satisfying feeling. Adam Scott's 66 underlined his class. But once again, he left the open frustrated, wondering what might have been. There's unfinished business. The two previous years at the Open, I'd been so close to getting my hands on that claret jug. You know, I think if I keep persisting, it'll, it'll come my way eventually. Scott's race was run. But Garcia remained in the heat of battle. He took on the 12th as McElroy's closest pursuer. Oh, look at that. Oh, lucky, lucky, lucky Jim. I, I did get very lucky there. Obviously, it was a terrible shot, uh, but uh, got a really good break, hit the, hit the grandstand and, and bounced back. Good luck has blessed many open champions. Had fate decreed this was Garcia's time? I knew 11, 12, 13, 14 were playing difficult. You know, maybe he could make a bogey uh, here and there. So I felt like if I was able to play them, uh, hopefully on the par, I could get fairly close to, to the lead. Instead, McElroy was resolute. With pars on the 11th and 12th, the lead remained three. But on the 13th, he was caught in two minds. Unsure of which club to use, his swing failed. Body stopped turning, club rolled over, ball went left. It just wasn't a good shot. It was the worst shot I hit all week, actually. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Now, some of that is very thick over there, particularly that wide. Obviously, you're in the lap of the gods a little. There was three places on that back nine left to 12, left to 13, and left to 14, where you do not want to be left to the green. So we're going up there, you think, uh, you're hoping that it's like half playable. One hole ahead, Garcia had a birdie putt for a potential two-shot swing. He's hit a very solid, oh, my goodness. That was a beautiful putt, gave it a chance. It was only a par, but Garcia edged within two when McElroy bogeyed the 13th. Even then, the leader was positive. If you can limit the damage as much as possible, especially at the Open Championship, then you're always going to do well. So to only make a bogey there was OK. Eduardo Molinari applied the finishing touches to the Italian challenge on the championship. Not a million miles away. Oh, what a beautiful effort. At 11 under, his best result in a major was assured. But Garcia's fate was yet to be decided, and Hoyleg's last par three would be crucial. The 15th was certainly um, pivotal. It was only two shots in it, and if he could actually put birdies on his card, he was going to put real pressure on Rory. Garcia's ball striking has always been his strength, but this time it let him down. You know, it was just a wedge, uh, not too difficult of a shot. I just unfortunately just kind of came out of it a little uh, and hit it, uh, hit it in the right bunker. Direct from a par on the 14th, McElroy walked onto the next tee. From there, he would watch as Garcia tried to make amends. It wasn't that difficult a bunker shot. Uh, I could actually see, you know, it was kind of like down and then a little bit up to the pin. Um, and I could actually see a good line on it. Unfortunately, I just decelerated a little bit on it and didn't get out of the bunker. That was almost the end of the chances for me there. Well, has that ended Sergio Garcia's challenge? Every shot at that stage was crucial. I mean, when Sergio obviously didn't get it out the first time, now I knew we're three in front. I was like, well, I mean, it's really ours now. You know, that's what I was thinking, but I, I mean, I wasn't going to tempt fate by saying that. But it wasn't over. 
Fowler birded the 15th. He moves to 13. They're queuing up. But Rory still has the lead. McElroy parred the 15th and remained three ahead. It was comfortable, but with two par fives to come, not over. On the 16th, Garcia had an eagle chance. I hit a, I hit a pretty good putt, but you know, making putts from 30 feet or so uh, on the last on the last holes, it's is not that uh, is not that easy. During the championship, McElroy's driving was exceptional, but none was sweeter than the one he struck on the 16th. It's absolutely majestic, superbly struck. That was one of the best drives of the week. I absolutely killed it. I was expecting the seven iron to go a little further than it did. It, it only pitched five or six on the green and it stopped very quickly. Oh, it's in so softly, but on the front right of the putting surface. So I still had a bit of work to do to get my two putts and make birdie. When I hit the putt, and I saw it roll up to a couple inches. That's when I thought, you know, I've got a three-shot lead here with, with two holes to play. I knew that the tournament was pretty much over when I made birdie on 16. Soaking up pressure, McElroy stood unscathed. He was almost there. But this had been no procession, thanks to Garcia. He was an open, nearly man, yet again, and more popular than ever. He's a great favourite with the British galleries. The crowd's really warm to Sergio. He's been British boys champion, he's been amateur champion here. What a reception, what a noise. They've got goose pimples. I'm so thankful for the way they've, they've always treated me in. And when you get a cheer like, like the one I've I've been fortunate to get. There's nothing you can do or say to, to, uh, to repay uh, that love they give you. So the walk on 18 is, is second to none. It's, it's so, so special. Garcia birded the 18th, closing the gap to only two. It meant that McElroy's task was yet to be completed. He could not allow focus to slip. When he hit a second shot on 18, for the moment I had a little bit of a scare. But the crowd made such a noise in the grandstand, I thought, geez, where's that finished? He still got to just do the job. The, the reception at the Open Championship is, um, I mean, there's no one really like it. To think that all those people are supporting you and you know, cheering for you, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and it's, it's just an incredible feeling. I wish I could have enjoyed it a little more. Even though I still had a couple of shots in hand, I didn't. I soaked it all in and I, I felt, you know, I, it felt great and I got goosebumps and, but I still never allowed myself to think that I'd won it yet. The week of the Open Championship, the Claret Jug is on your mind every day. You know, there's a constant image of it in your head, but I didn't allow myself to think about it. Probably until I hit the bunker shot on 18. It was nice to be able to, you know, just look around and, and take it all in. You know, I, I talked about it with friends, what it would mean to win the Open, and you think about what it might feel like if you do, and then you actually do it. Save the moment. It's indescribable, really. There was a feeling that the new generation was coming. Um, I think Adam Scott said, it's our time now. And uh, I think he's right about that.
There is a search for uh, a new star and there's no better candidate than, than Rory. He's great for golf, he's great for the, the younger fans, he's very popular, he's the real thing. I'm convinced that if Rory plays his best golf, nobody can beat him. He's better than Tiger right now. As the sun set on the championship, a new dawn broke. Childhood dreams and a young man's ambitions were realized. His place in the history of the game had been secured. But with it, the questions. How good can Rory McIlroy be? Which giants will he surpass? And will the 2014 Open champion be the greatest of them all? You see the pictures and the videos and the you know of, of the previous winners, you know, hoisting that little claret jug and you know, Savvy, Faldo, Tiger, Nicholas, Player, Ben Hogan, like oh just the, the greats of the game. And you know, at 25 years old, um, to be an open champion, you know, to see my name on there alongside some of those others is you know, there's nothing quite like it. <laughs>